What's up guys? It's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com. Today we are in my bedroom for part of the video. Um, this is Miss Spidey hiding in the back um, for those of you who are familiar with her. Um, and I wanted to make a video about what I go through whenever I'm going to redo her tank. So she's definitely overdue. It's definitely been over six months since I last cleaned it. So um, I definitely want to give her a tank cleaning and change and I got a bunch of really cool decor items that I'm excited to put in her tank. So I wanted to kind of do a little tutorial about my process about how I clean her tank and also how I redesign her tank. Um, every tarantula owner has their own process for this and so I just want to share what works for me and maybe part of it will work for you or something you can gain from it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to measure her tank so that I can then measure all of the new items that I want to put in her tank and see how I can rearrange them. So that's something that helps me spatially. So um, what I'm going to do now is just measure it and write things down. So this is, she's in a 10 gallon, so let's say it's like about 20, 20 and a half inches long. And most people do not put their rose hairs in such a big tank, but to be honest, it's really, for me, it's personal preference. Um, people keep their Chilean rose hairs in all different enclosures, and it really depends on what kind of tarantula you have as far as what their species needs. Um, however, um, she actually uses all the space. She has little areas in her tank that she likes going to, so I kind of like to let her have the space. It's really up to you. So now I'm just measuring the height, so it's about, it is about one foot, so like 12, and, and I'm measuring the height because there might be some, when I get to the decor items, there might be some times where I might want to make different levels. So I might want to bury part of this, I might want to make a little hill so she can go into her log. So those are the kind of things that you want to think about in that you are designing something that is three dimensional, and so it's 11 inches wide. And so now I've measured her tank, so then what I'm going to do is I am going to now measure each of her decor items that I want to put into the new tank, plus probably the stuff that's already in here in case I want to um, keep some of it, which I probably will. And then I will go about redesigning it. And I like to do that in a program called Illustrator because I am not very good with spatial awareness. I kind of need to lay it all out before I do it. And I also like to do that before so that I can come up with the best plan for her because um, you never want to be cleaning your tarantula's tank and then have a brain fart. You never want to not know what you're gonna do. You wanna have a plan ahead of time so that your tarantula is not outside of their tank um, for too long and also so that you don't um, have any bumps in the road. So you wanna have a good plan for this. Um, so yeah, over the next few days, I will be measuring all of her stuff, playing with the design, and I will just take you along for the journey in case it might help some of you when you go through this process for yourself, okay? And we have the jealous cat who wants to be a part of the video. All right, so now we're in the middle of my living room. I apologize for the crazy lighting. We've got a window right here. Um, but now I'm moving on to kind of measuring the new things that I've got for Spidey's tank as I'm going to be redesigning it. Um, I just kind of wanted to lay out what is involved, show you how I measure things. I am also measuring stuff that is currently in her tank since I will probably keep a few things. Um, for example, she really does love her log and she also really loves her water dish. I'm not sure how she's gonna handle having a new water dish, so I might try to use both if I've got the space. So um, we'll see how it goes, but yes. So I am just kind of measuring so that I can then go into my program, Illustrator, after this. You don't have to use Illustrator, you can probably use any other design program or draw it out. I'm personally not good at that. I kind of like doing it on the computer because it helps me. So that's what I'm gonna be doing after I get all the measurements and kind of just playing around, seeing how things are gonna fit. Um, it really helps me kind of see the scale of things and see more accurately how things are gonna fit. Hey, Ava. Hey, baby. Oh, you wanna be a spider? Not for you. Not for you. <laughs> She's so cute. Okay, anyway, moving on with the video. So I just wanted to show you my Anyway, I just wanted to show you my beautiful collection of substrate stuff. Um, I use EcoEarth 
coconut fiber substrate. I use the loose stuff. I used to use bricks in the past, but it was a hassle. It took a very long time to kind of break them up and then they would be wet and I'd have to dry it out. So I've honestly just moved on to the loose stuff because it is the easiest for me. And also, I honestly think Spidey likes it better. She loves this stuff. Um, I also have some vermiculite. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. And I also have some peat moss. Um, these are not things that I use in Spidey's tank, actually. Um, I use just like the straight dry stuff. Um, Spidey does not like moisture. But um, I have used this stuff in Blinkies tank before. Um, I am not sure they liked it either because they kind of stopped digging for a while when I first introduced this stuff. Um, I was kind of mixing it with the regular cocoa, coconut fiber. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this stuff again, but I'm holding on to it um, just to kind of see. Um, maybe I'll make a mix someday. Maybe I'll try to work it into Spidey's. Um, I don't know. I've got to do some research on that. She honestly doesn't need it, I don't think. Um, and one thing I did buy for this tank change is this stuff called Wipeout. It's supposed to be a disinfector, cleaner, and deodorizer for um, like terrarium specifically. I uh, have never used anything like that before. Usually I'll just do it with soap and water. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I'm going to leave links to everything that I've got in the description so that you guys can, if you want to check it out, you can. But we'll see. Um, I am not sure how environmentally friendly this is. That is also one of my concerns. I bought this quite a while ago before I got um, more interested in um, doing more like safe, envir environmentally friendly things and trying to move away from chemicals. But, you know, I, I bought it. I can't return it. So I'm just going to use it this time and see how it works. If you guys are aware of any environmentally friendly cleaners, um, or even the ones that you make at home that are really good for cleaning tanks. I'd love to learn about them, so definitely leave me a comment. Okay, and now we are moving on to the new stuff that I um, have. So you guys are familiar with the stuff that is already in Spidey's tank. She's got her water dish, her log. She's got a bigger version of this. Um, I had bought two. Um, she's got a few fake plants. I am going to possibly add these fake plants. I'm not gonna measure them because they're so small, you just kind of stick them um, and you can do kind of whatever you want with them in a corner or something. But um, yeah, so I've got these. I am, where is my tape measurer? There we go. <laughs> chaos, organized chaos, guys. All right, I am really curious to know how big this is because I might change the big one for this one because the, some of the stuff that I'm putting in her tank takes up a lot of space and she has a limited amount of space. So just kind of measuring this, eyeballing it a little bit. So I'm gonna say just five and a half inches wide to be safe and I'm just writing it down. And now the height of this is pretty important because I'm probably gonna be burying some of it. So I'm just kind of doing this that it's, yeah, it's about, it's about four and a half like that. Um, Yes, because um, there, I, I've been thinking a lot about these points on this, on these things. They're so pretty, and she honestly, like, she loves the glass dome that is in her tank right now. She loves to go in there and just be like enclosed. And I love that it's glass and that I can see her. But um, one of my um, viewers on YouTube had actually kind of raised a concern that these are little points, and I rightfully so am worried that maybe she's going to um possibly hurt herself so you always want to make sure that these things are safe for your spider so i might be burying this or doing something to these points so that is why the height is important because i need to make sure that i have enough substrate and also perhaps burying it will save me some space on the surface so i can put more stuff so spidey's gonna have a pretty exciting tank after this and i'm very excited to see what she does with it and i really like the idea of her having multiple levels too um this will be kind of like a, a more advanced tank design than i've done before so i'm pretty stoked about it um so this is her new water dish it is a far cry from her current water dish, which is basically just a little circle, and it's so old. Um, this is Spidey's original water dish. I've never changed it. I mean, she's gotten like temporary water dishes in the past when she would continue laying in her water dish and I couldn't, I couldn't add water, but um, this will be kind of a replacement. I don't know how she's gonna take it because she really, really loves 
the current one. So I might try to work both in there. Um, and I might also be burying part of this because um, I don't know how she's gonna like this. This is way fancier than what she's got. So this is gonna be a trial and error, guys. We'll see, I'm kind of, kind of scared. So it's about six inches wide at its widest. And then if I do bury it, you know, let's just say it's about two inches. And you know, guys, you don't have to do all of this. This is really like micromanaging of me, but um, I like to have a plan. As you guys know, I struggle with anxiety. It's something that I've noticed that is actually making me procrastinate doing her tank is that I'm not quite sure what I wanna do yet. And I don't wanna wait until that moment um, where she's out of the tank and it's clean and, and then I've got a playing around. So I don't like that. That makes me nervous and I don't think that's helpful for Spidey either because I know that she wants to be back in her tank. Um, I don't want to have any accidents while she's outside of her tank. So um, I really try to make this process go as smoothly as possible. And sometimes planning really helps me with my anxiety. Sometimes feeling like I'm on top of things and that I'm being organized really helps and it helps inspire me and motivate me to do something instead of kind of being paralyzed in uh, not knowing what to do or paralyzed in like, oh, I wanna make the most perfect design for her. Um, so by helping myself work through it, by kind of making, making sure that I've done all the steps and that I've tried to do my best really helps me kind of work through that kind of stuff because around here, tank changes are a big deal. <laughs> and you guys know that I love Spidey so much. And if you guys are tarantula owners, you know how much effort we put into our tanks and how much we love our tarantulas and how much we want to just give them the best home. So I'm sure that you guys understand. So this base is like three and a half inches. This is the new big fancy plant that I'm putting in. I might be burying part of this, um, but maybe this can go in like a corner or something. Let's say it's like seven and a half high. And I also really love this plant because, you know, as a, as a graphic designer, I try to make sure that like everything's gonna work really nice together and aesthetically pleasing. Um, so we will see how that's gonna work out. Um, and I also have some really cute little doodads that I bought. Um, I think this one's probably one of the only ones I have to measure just because it's probably gonna go on the surface and I've gotta, I've gotta work that into the design somehow. Um, she's got a little lighthouse that I'm probably gonna, I mean, I'm gonna guess this is just one, one inch. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to put in somewhere, try to make a little design. Um, she's got these little logs too. Um, and so that'll have to be worked in. Cause I'd like to kind of make like a concept this time, which I've never done. I've just kind of like tried to give her little areas that I think she'll like, but I'd like to kind of, I don't know, just make it, um, more beautiful and, and make it kind of all make sense to her. And I'm really excited to see what she does with all these elements because as you guys know, if you've watched my videos, Spidey always finds a way to do something crazy. Um, and I also have, I'm not gonna measure them, but I have these very cute little elements that I've bought. Like I have a little bunny. Um, I have a little turtle, which is really cute. Um, I talked about this stuff in another video in the past. I've got these like little baby mushrooms. Now these might not go in Spidey's tank. Blinky is also due for a tank cleaning soon. Um, so these little things might actually go in Blinky's tank because they're so small and they're like the perfect size for Blinky. Um, I am kind of worried that Spidey's gonna hide these things if I put them in her tank and I will never see them again. So I don't think I'm gonna try that out. Although I am really tempted to see what she'll do with them. But at the same time, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that they're just too small for her. So um, I really don't want to risk throwing them out during another tank change because she's buried them or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, that is um, the other part of measuring this stuff. And then in the next phase of this whole thing, um, I am going to be showing you what it looks like when I put all this stuff into Illustrator and like scale it and, um, and then kind of play around with the design and seeing what works. Um, this is probably the stage that I'm really excited about as I start visualizing. Um, and like I said, guys, I, this is kind of like an overcomplication of what you could do. But, you know, if you are somebody who kind of struggles with 
figuring out how things work spatially or how things will work together and you need a visual before you go in, um, this is something that really helps me. And I think that if you're really somebody who kind of gets um, stuck, as in like, am I doing the right thing? Um, am I, is this the best design? Being able to give yourself space to just play with this, um, this is really nice. I mean, ideally I would have a, a completely different 10 gallon that I could put the substrate in and just play around in the space, just put Spidey in the other tank, but I don't have an extra 10 gallon hanging around. Um, so I am just working with what I have. And so I've got to design Spidey's tank and have a plan beforehand um, so that she is not out of her tank too long as I do the tank cleaning. And so this is the hot mess that I will be working from. This has like all the measurements, her old stuff, um, her tank, this is her new stuff, and this is actually Spidey. Um, this is what I think she is without her legs being like totally stretched out. She is a big girl. And yes, I needed to measure her because I would like to be able to give her room to spread out as she likes to do. She likes to do her spider yoga. So yeah, I'm basically gonna come over to Illustrator and um, now I'm gonna try to see what I can fit in the tank. These measurements, especially these ones, the old ones, are not going to be super accurate because I had to measure these things while she was in the tank so I couldn't get super close to them because I didn't want to disturb her. But anyway, so now we're going over my computer. I use Adobe Illustrator for my design stuff and I'll kind of take you through the process. Okay, so now we're kind of getting into the thick of it. Um, as an anxious person, I can feel my anxiety and perfectionism, uh, performance anxiety rising, but um, this is actually the fun part too. So it can be fun. So I have to keep in mind that as I design this, I am designing spatially as if I were looking at it from the top, but I have to also remember that I am also thinking about it in terms of vertical space too. So some of this stuff I might be able to bury a little bit or create little tunnels to make more room for things on the surface. So um, I'm hoping that maybe I can use, where is it? This square right here to kind of think about how things work spatially. But I've got two different little um, spaces to work right now just to see different alternatives, see what I like best. This circle, <laughs> it represents the space that Spidey might occupy if she was to stretch out a little bit, um, more or less. I was really eyeballing it because she wasn't spread out when I tried to measure her and I wasn't holding the tape measure for her very close to her. Um, but these are like the new things that I bought for her tank. Um, these tiny little things that are, aren't labeled, they're like little design elements. This is the stuff that's currently in her tank. So her beloved jar lid, her old water dish, which I'm really gonna try to keep. Her log is very important. Um, so those things will probably, I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna categorize things that need to stay. So the jar lid definitely needs to come over. Definitely the log. Definitely the ping pong ball. <laughs> and now what do I really, really, well, she definitely needs to be here. Um, and now let me think what I definitely want to do her new water dish. I'm not too sure about whether I'm gonna use the hex, the small hexagon or the big one that she's got right now, which is like her glass house, um, but we'll see. So let me kind of play around, plug in, and, and I'll show you guys what the process is looking like. Here we are, uh, it's about 15 minutes later. I've been playing around. So this is the hot mess that I've been working in. So this may not make much sense to you, but visually it does to me. Now, this is not to say that once I actually start doing the tank, that I will see some errors that is normal. Um, I am kind of spatially challenged, which is why I do this, but it's not foolproof. So there are usually things that like I miss or things that I maybe miscalculated. The measurements might be a tiny bit off. But anyway, so I've got two different designs. So this one, um, I really like. Um, this might be my backup because when I, I, I was actually gonna just stay with this, but when I, when I thought about this idea over here, um, and I'm gonna explain that in a second. I think I wanna try this out first because vertically what's gonna happen is Spidey's log and her old glass dome is going to be 
in the middle of the tank. And hopefully if I do it right and it works out, um, her old dome is gonna be partially or mostly underground. So she's got a nice little dark place, but the dome is glass. So I'm gonna be able to see her and get some amazing pictures. So she's finally gonna have this really beautiful enclosed dark space for herself. Um, she loves being in her dome right now, but there's a lot of light in there. Um, so I'm not sure if it bothers her, but this this will be like her little cave. Um, and I'm very excited. I've never done an underground tunnel for her before, so I'm super excited. And then the log, hopefully, if it works out correctly, is gonna come out from that on a diagonal and be a little bit on the surface so she can go back down. And then she's gonna have like her water dish. Um, she's gonna have room to move around with her little objects. I'm gonna, I got all, both of the water dishes in there right now, so I'm hoping that it's gonna work out the way I want it to. You know what, actually, now that I think about it, the water dish looks really small. But anyway, so how embarrassing. We'll see how it turns out. Um, but yeah, and the, some things I think of as I, um, as I do this is, one is what is gonna be good for her? Like how does she use her stuff right now? I know that she loves going in her old glass dome. So obviously I want to um, keep that in her tank. Fortunately, because I did this, I feel like I have room for everything, even the new and old stuff, as long as I layer things in the substrate and kind of bury some stuff partially. So that's really cool. I'm hoping that my measurements are pretty good for that and that um, it's not too inaccurate. Um, so I'm thinking about what would she do in the tank? Um, what has she done in the past? What are some of her habits? What does she like to do? Um, Spidey does actually, despite being in a, this big tank and being a Chilean rosehair who doesn't actually need tons of room, she uses all of her tank. Um, like these little objects are like, this represents her ping pong ball, her jar lid. Um, she loves doing stuff. Um, it's really important that her old water dish survives because she loves that thing. She likes to just lay in it. So I might just keep it in there for her to lay in because she's got a, a real water dish right here. Um, so we'll see. Um, but yes, so there would be an underground tunnel and then this stuff would be partially buried, allowing me more space. Um, I think that I'm gonna keep another glass dome, but on the surface. So this is gonna not only give her a lot of functionality and enrichment, um, a lot of interesting things for her to do, but it's also gonna provide some very beautiful pictures. So the way I've designed it is that the water dishes right here are going to be on the side facing me, the side that gets some of the light. This is where I get my best Spidey picks. On the side that is also away from the wall, she's gonna have her glass dome, so if she goes in that, I'll be able to get some really beautiful pictures on this side. The plants and stuff, the decor stuff, is gonna be in the background. Um, she'll be able to move around, she'll have her jar lid and things, so, yeah, and, and she loves to lay in her water dishes and, and drink from them and be around them. So by having her moving towards the sides and encouraging her to stay there, hopefully she will not only be super comfortable and happy, but also um, I'll be able to get some really beautiful photos and videos too. So that's also kind of how I make my decisions. It's not only thinking about how she'll move around and use things, but also, you know, what provides some really, what actually allows me to enjoy her and enjoy um, seeing her and also for you guys too, um, because you guys are big fans. So yeah, Spidey has to deliver for her fans. I also think about, you know, how will the light hit the tank? So it is going to be important that she has space in the back to retreat if there are, um, I mean, we have curtains on the windows right now, but there is a certain time of day where, where a lot of light hits in the morning. So I wanna make sure that she has areas to retreat in and that she's got enough space to go to the back if she wants to. And then on this side, this is a more simple design. Nothing is super underground as you can see when we go to the vertical layout. But um, she's got her log, which is gonna be like maybe a little bit buried as you can see in the vertical space, but it's gonna be covered with moss. So I'm thinking more about the foreground and her pictures. This, I'm, I'm only gonna use one glass dome in this design because it's not going underground and I will only have room for one. So. Um, I'm gonna kind of look at them and see what looks best in the space if this design does not work out. And then she's got her two water dishes, a nice fake plant, some decor items that I can play with. And then she can kind of occupy the middle space. So, you know, this is kind of a rough outline 
it may not work out like this. You know, we try our best to stay organized over here, but you know, things always happen. And sometimes the way I think that it works in my mind is not the way it works in real life. I think all of us can relate to that when it comes to tarantulas. So yeah, this is how I do it. And so what I'll do is um, I will now be going on to the actual cleaning of the tank and then redesigning. So you'll get to see how I use this. We're about to be in my bathroom because that is where all the tank changing is done. Um, this is kind of my Christmas present to Spidey. I'm filming this in December. I don't know when I'm gonna get a chance to edit it, but yeah, I wanted her to have a clean tank going into the new year. So um, I'm hoping that she will really <laughs> enjoy um, the new design. You guys saw me kind of plan it before, so um, I am excited to see how this goes and also a little bit nervous because there are usually things that we don't think about sometimes and then we're knee deep in it <laughs> and then we are like, oh, okay, that's not gonna work today. That is a normal part of it. So I'm just gonna kind of give a rundown of my basic supplies that I use. Like I said, everybody's got their own way of doing this, but this is how I do it. So um, feel free to take some inspiration or if there are any ideas that you like. So the things that you will need if you don't already have them is of course the tank. Now you might have a backup tank that you can use um i do not spidey has one tank so um however i will be using a critter keeper to hold her while i clean her real tank so having a little tank or a container or a tupperware to hold the tarantula in is very very important you also need the decor um you also need like a cleaner or soap and water for cleaning um, i am using this new stuff called wipeout that i've never used before i'll show you when we get to that part you will need the new substrate and you will also need a method of dumping the old substrate. So I use a big garbage bag for that. You'll need the new decor. If you're reusing old decor, you're gonna have to clean all of that stuff. All of that stuff has to be cleaned and disinfected and dried so that you do not transfer any mold or invite any mold into the new tank. Gloves can also be useful. I have some gloves. I don't know if I'm gonna use them today because my nails are really short, but if you have long nails, you do not want to have substrate under your nails. It is not fun. It's not fun to get out. So um, that can kind of protect you. You're also going to need a cleaning brush or something scrubby, um, a little bit that can be a little bit abrasive in the tank just so you can clean any any gunk that got on the walls. Um, occasionally, Spidey likes to poop right on the walls of her tank, so <laughs> sometimes there's a little bit of caked up stuff that needs to come off. You will also need maybe some towels or blankets to put on the floor. Um, this is something that I do to protect my floor. We're gonna be doing it in the bathroom. Um, so there's a tile floor that I wanna protect, especially since her enclosure is a little bit heavy and it's so big, it's a 10 gallon. Um, but you may just wanna use this in, to make cleanup easier too. Um, I'm using some sheets and blankets that I need to wash later anyway. So if any dirt escapes or if things get wet and gross during this process, cause sometimes it can be messy, um, it's not gonna be a big deal. The cleanup is going to be really, really easy. And I also like the sheets and stuff because in case an emergency happens and uh, uh, Spidey runs out of her tank, which I don't think she will, but you know, we never know. So um, I like the idea of her being able to be on a soft surface. Maybe that'll slow her down. Rather than giving her a hard surface, she can just kind of scuttle across. Um, and for that, you'll also want a catch cup or something to catch your tarantula in. So Spidey's a Chilean rose hair. This is how I would do a Chilean rose hair's tank you have an arboreal tarantula or a different type of terrestrial tarantula, your process and your enclosure is gonna look a lot different than mine. So just be aware, everybody's got a different way. Um, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you've got enough time to do this, especially if this is your first time doing this, you wanna make sure that you have at least two hours. This is just in case your spider runs away, in case you forgot something and you need to run and get it, in case you mess up somewhere. You wanna make sure that you're not doing this 15 minutes before you have to leave the house. Today, it's gonna to take me quite a while just because I'm trying to film everything and explain everything I'm doing. And I've never really done a video like this before. So I'm not really experienced with camera angles or like that. So this is gonna be different for me. So it's probably gonna take a while. I've got you know my whole afternoon clear just, just in case. I don't think it's gonna take that long, but I just don't want to rush. Um, start to finish, probably 
it's not going to take that long. I want to say a half hour to an hour if you were just going straight through with no bumps in the road. Another really important consideration is that you are going to want to make sure you're uninterrupted. Um, so if you've got kids, spouses, roommates, pets, <laughs> or any anything else that might get in the way, um, phone calls perhaps, um, somebody delivering food to you. You wanna make sure that none of these things can interrupt you. Um, you wanna to communicate to your loved ones or people that you live with that you are gonna be busy for the next hour or so and to not disturb. You do not want your cat getting in the room that you're doing your tarantula tank change in. You do not want your kids interrupting you and keeping you distracted or you having to go away from the tank for a second. You wanna be completely focused and uninterrupted. Right now, I'm, I'm gonna be in an enclosed room. The jealous cat is sleeping. My boyfriend is gone for the day. He's at work, so I am alone in the house. So it's just me, Spidey. So you wanna kind of plan your process ahead of time, gather all of your materials. I have all my cleaning stuff um, right outside this room. I've got Spidey outside this room. I'm gonna bring her back in and kind of show you how I'm setting up in a second. Um, but you want to just have everything around. You don't want to be having to go in and out of the room a lot. You do not want to be distracted and then like forget to come back to it. You just want to make sure that you're good to go. It's a lot of prep. It's a lot of like gathering all the materials. But something that I do is I just kind of keep all of the stuff in like what I call Spidey's box, her supply box, so that I kind of just keep everything in one place. And then when I need it, I can just pull out that box. Now, of course, I have two tarantulas. This is probably a lot more complicated if you have like 50 or 100. <laughs> but um, this is just what I do to make my life a little bit easier. The other big thing is the location. Location is very, very important. Where I do it, like I mentioned, is my bathroom. It's a small bathroom. Um, I think doing this in a small space is really, really good so the spider can't run and go crazy. Um, I also think that there are maybe a few places to hide. Um, this enables me to kind of stay in the same room with all of the supplies and, and everything and kind of get everything done really quickly. Um, but also for Spidey, like my bathroom is really small. There's not many places where she can hide or get away. Um, so I really enjoy that. And what I'll also be doing is when I remove her from the tank, I will be putting towels under the door so that she can't get out. And I will also be closing my shower door in case she wants to run into the bathtub. So um, I will be trying to take all precautions to make sure that she is safe. And yeah, the towels under the door, I think is one of your biggest, um, my biggest tip is that like if you've got other pets or something in the house, like I do not want Spidey to run out of the bathroom. I, I just don't want her to run into the jealous cat because the jealous cat is very jealous. She is also a pro mouse hunter, so I do not want to see that. <laughs> um, if you're not doing this in your bathroom or if you've got a different bathroom setup than mine, um, if you've got any like holes near the floor or anything, you want to make sure that those are all like um, plugged up. You basically want to remove anything that this tarantula might want to get into. Now to get on with this, now that I've done all of that talking, I'm going to set up my bathroom really quick. I'm going to show you all that stuff. And then I'm gonna show you how I remove Spidey from her tank so that I can get to work. So the first thing I'm doing is I am putting this kind of like fleece, uh, fluffy blanket on the floor um, to further protect the floor in case I drop the tank. <laughs> putting another sheet on there. This is kind of to help me catch any dirt that escapes. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Spidey in here. I've also got like the critter keeper, some cleaning supplies. This looks like organized chaos. Um, I've got my script <laughs> right here. Got lots of towels. Um, I've got the tape for her lid, which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, and we're almost ready to go. Got a bunch of towels in the bathroom. Um, and I've got her cleaner on the bathtub. So I'm about to bring her in and extract her and her decor. And then um, we'll get to actually doing the tank finally. Okay, so Spidey's in the bathroom. The shower door is closed so that she can't jump into the bathtub. Um, I've got her on some blankets in case she gets out of the tank. I'm also going, these are my bunny slippers. <laughs> also plugged up that door. This is a very tiny bathroom, so this is actually kind of perfect. Um, and now we're gonna get Spidey out of her tank. Now, Spidey is a really good girl. <laughs> um, now, not to say that tarantulas can't be a bit unpredictable, but um, she is a really good spider. She is really, really calm. So I can kind of leave the top off like this while I'm working and while I get her 
into this uh, little mini container that I'm gonna use. Um, your tarantula may not be as calm. You may not be able to take your time with this and you may not be able to film while you're doing this. So um, keep in mind what kind of tarantula you have. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys a little trick that I use. So um, I'm gonna be putting her in this, it's a critter keeper I got on Amazon. And what I like to do is because she loves her webs, um, she's got these really, I don't know if you can see it, but she makes little web carpets. And I know that this process can be really stressful for her um, getting into this new little tank. So um, you want to be really um, considerate to your spider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of her old substrate. You see how she webbed that really nicely. And I'm going to put it in. And this is where the sheets come in handy so that you don't make a big mess all over your house. Um, I'm going to put the substrate in just so that um, as she's waiting for me, you know, if it takes like an hour, a half hour, however long it takes. Um, while she's waiting for me, she has something that kind of mimics her um, old tank. So yeah, I like to kind of make this easier for her. And now I'm gonna put her in the tank. And it's got a lid, every container needs to have a lid. <laughs> and ventilation, that's important too. So I'll show you guys how I get Spidey in. Hey baby. So Spidey and many tarantulas are very sensitive to touch uh, or vibrations. So she can already tell that something strange is going on. She's being really calm and good about it. So I've got my tongs and I'm going to coax her very gently, trying to be as gentle and respectful as possible of her. And I'm gonna see if I can get her in here really easily. Uh, a little too much substrate. I want to do this as gently as possible because I know she's going to be a little bit scared and unhappy about it. So since this stuff is kind of getting in my way, okay, honey. I'm sorry. This is her jar lid that she really loves. Sometimes you're going to have to move stuff around because there are obstacles to getting the spider out. <laughs> And maybe I can get her to come over a little bit here. Baby. There we go. Just kind of wanted her to come over here a little bit so I could coax her. Got a little too curious about the tongs. <laughs> hey, baby. Come on. Wrong way. Wrong way. Let me see if I can turn her around. Well, since she's doing that, I'm gonna take some more stuff out and maybe I can get her around. So this is her log that she loves dearly. Her plants. Sometimes it's hard to get the spider out. This is her dome, which she loves so much. I think I'm gonna find her bottle cap right here. see just taking all the stuff out while she's in a corner that I can't really get her I like to coax her in to be honest I don't like picking her up I have never done that before I don't want to um I just don't trust it there we go okay Maybe we can get you to go in this way, huh? Okay, girl. Whoop, this way. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the sign of stress, guys. Um, so when they start to kind of crunch into themselves like that, I mean, she's not happy. But she's not being, you know, really defensive or anything. So I'm going to keep going. Let me see if I can pull this thing out without her being upset. All right. You want to get in there? Okay, I'm just going to dump this. 
This is her dome. It's pretty big, right? I'm gonna kind of brush this off. I'm gonna have to clean that. Lots of webs. This is her ping pong ball. I really would like her to do this on her on her own. I think it it reduces injury or the chances of injury. And also I think it's not very stressful for her. Okay. She's such a good girl. There we go, there we go. No. There we go. It's okay, it's okay. No. There we go. You got some dirt in there. There we go. This is why you want to um, have a lot of time, <laughs> guys, because, um, I mean, this is just my style. Um, maybe other people are more forceful, but, you know, sometimes she wants to take her time, and I don't want to rush her. I think that's how mistakes happen. So now she's in her critter keeper with, you know, what I believe is a minimal amount of stress to her. I've made sure that that lid is on. Now I'm going to actually take her to a different room um, because my bathroom's so small. I don't want to take the risk that I might knock her tank over or do something that might hurt her. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, um, yeah, just move her. I'll show you where I put her. So I'm gonna be keeping Spidey in my office. Um, just for now, I'm gonna be closing the door so she can't get out, making sure this thing is on. Um, she is doing okay, she's fine, she's gonna be fine. I got some of the decor items right there. I've got all the substrate. It's right next to the bathroom I'm working in so I can check on her. I'll make sure that lid is on good. <laughs> And there's a little space here and here because this room gets pretty cold. So she's going to be fine. Um, I am going to do things as fast as I can so I can return her to the place where she really wants to be in her big tank. Okay, so here's the fun part. <laughs> I've got this sheet in my bathtub just so I can kind of protect the tank and the bottom of the tub just while I'm getting the dirt out. Um, I have got some gloves. And I've also got a garbage bag for this. Um, the, all this is going to be going in this garbage bag. And then we're going to get to the cleaning part. So fun. Now, you do not want to wear clothes that you care an awful lot about. Also, making sure your tub is dry is also helpful. Mine is mostly dry. So now I am in the tub. The tank is in the tub. <laughs> and so is the garbage bag. So... That's what I do. Then, as you can see, this tank is actually, it's a 10 gallon, it's pretty big. So I literally just <laughs> go like this, put the garbage bag all around, and then I start dumping it. Start dumping all of that substrate. A little messy but that's why we're doing it in the bathtub because I have made a mess many times before so just kind of dump it and now I'm gonna use my hands to help
almost done. Alright, so now we're gonna get to the cleaning part. I'm cleaning her whole tank and her lid and then like her little little stuff. So um here is her lid. Her lid can get pretty dusty. I have to redo the tape. So the purpose of the tank, because she has a mesh lid, which is very dangerous. Um the purpose of the tape is to prevent her from climbing on the mid on the lid. She can't get to it. Um so this tape needs to be redone. Um I would do it every time. I'm just gonna get a plexiglass. I've been saying that for the longest, but honestly, um, this pandemic has really um, just made me a little bit scatterbrained. So a lot of the things that I intended to do sooner than I actually do them aren't happening. So yeah, that's gonna be a thing. I'm just gonna go to Home Depot, get some plexiglass, and um, maybe have my boyfriend help me put some holes in it for her. Because this lid, it, this is not fun. Um, and it also collects a fair amount of dust because it's at the top. So, yeah, this is garbage too that will be thrown um, out with her substrate. So, as you can see, this makes quite a mess. That's why we do it in the bathroom and in the bathtub. Right now I'm getting in the tub with all the cleaning stuff and we're going to turn on the water. I have my cleaner, my scrubby brush. Um, this stuff is called Wipeout. It is a terrarium disinfectant and a cleaner. Um, you just spray it on, leave it on for five minutes, and then you clean and rinse. First time using this, um, I have a link in the description for all the stuff that I'm using, so if that interests you, then feel free to give it a try. I'm gonna do this last. Okay. Let the fun, let the fun begin. So that was an adventure. So now I'm going to disinfect. What I've done, just to summarize, is wash the entire tank out with warm water um, so that like, I kind of give the chance um, for any hardened poops that Spidey has left behind to soften. I scrubbed a little bit with a scrubby brush um, just to get any of that out, wash it out again. And now I'm ready to disinfect just to be safe. So I'm gonna be using this for the first time. Um, I am not going to disinfect the lid um, because I do not believe anything has um, gotten on there. However, I will definitely scrub it later. I'm going to disinfect the tank and her toys and things. So I'm just going to be spraying this on and then it's got to sit for like five minutes. So just disinfecting. Actually, it's got a really nice spray. I was afraid that the spray wasn't going to be very nice, but it is. I got the dome, which I'm gonna have to clean a little bit further since there's some poops on there too. That will just disinfect all around there. Let that sit. Jar lid. Plants. I did wet the log. I'm not gonna disinfect the log because um, I'm afraid that it's gonna be like porous and I'm not gonna be able to um, get this off. So I just wet it and kind of spot cleaned it 
and I'm gonna have to wait till that thoroughly dries. So th that's gonna be the last. Um, yeah, and I guess we just kind of chill out for five minutes while this thing does what it has to do. Okay, so now I'm going to wash everything with warm water, scrub some things some more, and just get everything ready so that I can dry it. So I just got some soap, so now I'm gonna continue the cleaning process on those dirtier items. I don't know how clean this is gonna get. But she loves this thing. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to start drying. You wanna make sure that this is completely, um, completely dry so you don't get any mold once you put the substrate back in. So I'm gonna get a towel and then we're gonna dry and dry and dry. Number one, I'm just the honestly, the outside is not as important as the inside. Um, the inside is what I'm really worried about, but I want to get this as dry as I can just so that I can take it out of the bathtub and then start drying the inside while the water kind of just kind of trickles down. We are now in the bathroom on the floor. Um, I'm just gonna dry everything, all her toys, all her, um, her the rest of her tank. I'm gonna dry it and yeah, it's all stuff I have to dry. It. Okay, so um, everything is dried. I am just um, leaving it in this room for about an hour to make sure that everything is completely dry, particularly the tank because I don't wanna put all the substrate in there and stuff and then realize that I missed a spot and then the year gets mold in there. Um, and I also have the log uh, in front of the heater too um, because I um, it's quite wet right now and I wanna make sure it completely dries. So I'm gonna let all of this stuff hang out in here um, with the door closed for an hour. I have put Spidey in another closed door room where she'll be comfortable and this can just dry out. Okay guys, now we officially made it to the fun part. All of that for this. Um, in this stage, I'm going to be retaping Spidey's lid, which is now dry. Um, got a little bit of residue on that from the former tape. And this is just until I get some plexiglass um, because I really don't like this. But this is how I deal with it for now. Um, I have made a tutorial about how I do this in a, another video, which I can link, but I'm gonna do it here anyway. So, I'm gonna take my slippers off. So, the reason I do this is because Spidey in the past, hasn't in many years, but in the past has been a bad girl and has, um, actually climbed onto her mesh lid and gotten her little spider claws stuck in here. And that is not good. That is not something, that's not something that we want. So this is my solution for that. I have found that by taping up the perimeter of this lid, she cannot get her stinky little feet up here the way she wants to. So that has eliminated that problem for us. Um, so that's all I'm doing. This is not 
scientific or professional in any way, but this is kind of the workaround that I've um, come to for this problem. Now you want to make sure that you completely tape this down, um, and I'm going to be cutting off any extra pieces at the end. You want to make sure that there's no adhesive that they can get to. That's all I'm doing here. And what I'm going to be doing is actually putting a second layer because um, Spidey is a full grown girl. Um, I don't think she's getting any bigger, but she um, has got some really long legs. So I have seen where she's actually tried to reach um, over. <laughs> um, she's a leggy girl. And I cannot have that. Cannot be having a spider be doing that. So, so yeah, I'm just doing this really loosely for now. Gonna clean it up later just so you guys can see. Um, and so there was nothing wrong with the tape before, but it was very dusty um, as the top of the tanks do get. So yeah, I wanted to redo it since she'll have like a completely fresh, fresh stuff. Um, it was looking kind of gross. And also like you never want to take the chance that the adhesive might be um, just coming apart. So um, you never want to never want to make sure that adhesive isn't working. So now I'm adding the second layer, which is just going to go a little bit in. I am not covering the middle vents. Um, she is going to have tons of air. I am just trying to make sure that her legs cannot get um, over this tape. She is going to be safe. Um, I have heard that a lot of the terrestrials that aren't supposed to like climbing actually really love it, and Spidey has been known to be one of those. Um, she is actually very skilled at climbing, and uh, has gotten it's gotten her into trouble a few times. So I am just putting this aside. This is just regular masking tape too. Um, so yes, now the the non-sticky side is where it would go um, and where Spidey would be touching it. Now I'm just gonna kind of clean this up and get this looking much nicer than it is. You wanna get it as close to the edge as possible. Keep those little spider paws safe, you know? Any tarantula owner just hopes that their spider is really gonna like it. Um, I have certainly <laughs> spent a lot of time designing tanks for Spidey in the past, and she has like pulled things out of it, trashed her plants. So, you know, you never know. You just hope for the best. <laughs> I'm very excited about this design. I hope that she's gonna like it because. I'm very proud of myself, but at least you guys will be able to enjoy it before she does what she's going to do to it. All right, one more corner to fix, and then we can move on. Okay, finally, so now this stuff just gets pressed down even more to make sure that it is good to go. Looks nice and fresh and not dusty. There we go. All right, so now we can finally put the substrate in and actually get to the real design. So this is exciting. It's gonna be based on your tarantula's needs. Spidey's in a 10 gallon and she's a terrestrial. I don't want her climbing. So what I have to do is I have to put a lot of substrate in. Um, for these kind of spiders, you're gonna want like it to be up to here. Um, which is why I have so many bags of substrate behind me. Um, so she gets a lot, but in this design, if you guys remember where I had done that design, um, the design I really want to try is where her old dome is going to be on the bottom of the tank. And this is actually a really good trick, guys, if you want to save substrate, but you're trying to make multiple layers in your tarantula tank. Um, I've seen people put like um, tubs and stuff so that they save substrate. Because if you have a tarantula that mostly just stays on the surface and doesn't really dig, you probably don't need, you probably don't need to be using 
solid substrate, like top to bottom. You can probably save. So um, what I'm gonna be trying in this um, design, which is something I've never done before, um, is trying to build her a little underground layer. Uh, Spidey does not burrow. <laughs> well, she has tried, but she's not very good at it. So I'm hoping that giving her this will give me a way to see her and admire her while also creating something really cool that she'll hopefully like. Um, it always it always makes me really happy when Spidey likes the things I give her. Um, and so in my design, I wanted to give myself a little looking glass area and then I was gonna have the log um, going up. However, that doesn't look like it's gonna work because it's really tight. Um, so I'm wondering if, you know, and this is all about tinkering, I'm wondering if this might be a more doable design this way. Or she's got another, she has another little dome. Um, I wonder how this might work. No. Trying to follow my design that I had made. Um, it's a bit tricky. So let me see. I'm just playing around. This is kind of the trial and error part of tarantula keeping. Like I have to make sure that this is going to work because if it's too close to the, um, if, if this long is too high and it's too close to the, um, what's it called? The ceiling or the mesh, she will find a way onto the mesh and I don't want that. So I've really got to make sure that she can't really get up there. I'm totally changing my idea. Um, I'm trying to find ways to make that work. So I'm trying to find ways to make it work um, in a different way. So this stuff will always happen. Um, as you go on. Um, things don't work out the way you want them to and that's okay. So I'm going to take this half use substrate, start filling it up, and I'm going to start moving things around. This is coconut fiber. It's loose. I used to use the bricks, but that was a nightmare as far as getting the dirt under my nails and also like having a wet it, dry it out, do all this crap, so this is easier for me. Um, Spidey loves this stuff. Her species doesn't actually need any moisture in the soil, and she actually does not like it, so um, this works pretty good for the type of tarantula that she is. She, if, if the soil is even, or if the substrate is just even a little bit wet, she is not having it. She will literally climb to get away from the moisture, so. All right, that's done. And now, we're just designing. I like to kind of break it up, the bottom layer now, at creating that corner for her that she will hopefully enjoy. This is gonna save me a little bit of substrate, hopefully, in the end. I wanna I'm gonna make sure that that corner is clean. Putting this in for her. We just hope she's gonna like it. <laughs> we can just hope. So I'm purposely um, keeping these sides, the back, I'm purposely keeping these sides clear of substrate because I wanna be able to look at her. Gonna put some substrate in there so she can make a cozy little hole for herself. That is that is one thing that Spidey loves doing. So yeah, that is the bottom layer. I'm gonna put in another bag um, because the way that the log's gonna work is that it's gonna be kind of like going like that. So the log is gonna need support. And then I need to figure out the configuration of how everything else is going to go since I'm changing my plans. So, let's see. And, 
you know, this is kind of like how life goes. You plan your best, but then sometimes you wing it anyway, or sometimes you have to. So. I think that this bag is going to be enough. I have a whole other bag just in case, but I don't think I'm going to need it. This is all like a balancing act of trying to get everything just right. You kind of want to pack it down in some places to make it more, um, you know, I might actually need more substrate. Wow. Good thing I have a lot of it. Okay, bag number three. I need to do some thinking on my feet here. Okay guys, so I am literally just playing around here, um, continuing to play around. This is what it looks like so far. I'm gonna continue playing around in here. This is an old water dish, new water dish, the log, <laughs> and then it's hopefully gonna go down to here if you guys can see that. So yeah, I'm continuing to play around, seeing where things are gonna work, um, but I am going to show you the final product because this is getting very, very long. Okay, guys, I think I finally have a design that I am somewhat happy with I'm doing it on the fly. But yeah, so it's my first multi-layer. Um, there's going to be the dome. I'm hoping you guys can see it when I actually get into some different lighting. And this is the log that she's going to be able to climb into and get into the dome. Um, I haven't put water in yet. I will do that after I have placed her. I'm a little bit bummed that... The hexagon, the other pretty hexagon, the smaller one, didn't really fit into this configuration. I really, I guess I really underestimated how things were going to work um, or didn't calculate things correctly. So, you know, it's whatever. Um, maybe I'll find another use for it or in her next tank change. And then these little guys, I think they're just too small for Spidey. I'm kind of worried about what she'll do to them. Um, so I'm going to leave these for Blinky, who I am going to be doing next week. So um, I'll, I'll be giving them a tank change too. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna go get Spidey from the other room and introduce her to our new home. I'm so excited. She is, she has been such a good girl. I can tell she's a little bit nervous, like what's going on? So this is where I transfer her and hopefully she will cooperate. She usually does, she's usually really good. I'll just kind of help her out. Go ahead, baby. She's so sweet. Ooh, I'm sorry, honey.
beautiful girl on the move. <laughs> she's a little weird when she goes into a new surrounding. She's like, what is going on? <laughs> They're so sensitive to their environment. So as she's going into her new enclosure, um, I would never do a tank cleaning like right as I was about to go on vacation or about to not be able to observe her for a few weeks. Um, and maybe that's a little bit um, careful or a little bit too um, OCD about that. But in my experience, the first time that a tarantula gets into their home, they're gonna be like really off for a few days. Like they probably won't wanna eat um, or they're probably gonna be running around and climbing on things and stuff, just trying to get used to their new environment or figuring out what the change is. So um, I'm glad that I'm working from home during the pandemic because then I can just kind of stay close to Spidey and make sure she's not getting into any trouble because you never know, you know, your spider might interact with their new home in a way that you didn't intend or you didn't see coming. And like some of those things might actually be dangerous. So I am excited to see what she does in this tank, but I also wanna make sure that she's gonna be safe. So, and she is being such a slow poke and that's okay. I try to do this really gently because I know that it's scary for her. Come on, honey. Good girl, she's so good. Yes, very good. Go ahead. Oh, she's getting scared. <laughs> there you go, honey. Yeah. And she's in, ooh, beautiful girl. And then I'm gonna add some water to her water dish. This water dish is gonna be kept blank um, because I don't want any water overflow going into here and getting moldy but also because she just likes using this as like a bed she likes to lay in it so um, she's only gonna have one water dish over here and hopefully that'll let me control the environment but she looks so beautiful in here already I hope she likes it I'm gonna have so much fun watching her explore this new place okay guys it looks really nice I'm very proud of it um, it's nighttime, so there's a lot of glare and not the best lighting, but she's got her water. She is exploring her new home. <laughs> and I think that this dome thing is going to work out pretty nicely, actually. Um, it's nice and dark in there. Ugh, if you guys could actually see it. It's nice and dark in there. I'll add some pictures, um, when it's actually nice and light in this room. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited, um, to see how she uses this space. Um, yeah, get a nice little view of her secret stuff. But yeah, it's kind of like a fairy tale theme, I guess. Um, <laughs> I'm just so excited and I think she looks so beautiful and amazing. Oh, she's such a beautiful spider. I hope that you guys like this. So I hope that this was informative. I know it was a really long video. Um, things didn't go as planned. They never do. And that's okay. We just you know, we try to prepare the best we can and we just go with it with what's going to be good for our spider. Um, so I hope that that helped you guys see the process. Um, maybe this offers you a more realistic um, perspective of what it's like to actually have a tarantula if you're thinking about getting one. Because I will say that while the actual work of having a tarantula is not time consuming, but if you've got to do big tank changes like this one and then you've got more than one, um, it's a lot. So I want you guys to be prepared and just kind of know that there are different ways to do things. We all have our own methods as we learn. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys love Spidey's new tank. I certainly do. I think she will too. And I am so excited to share with you guys what she does with it. I think it's going to be so cool. She's so creative. So I'm excited. <laughs> all right. I have got to now clean up the mess I've made. It's not too bad, but there's some dirt. I've got to vacuum up um, and then kind of um, clean up the bathroom a little bit but other than that like my method is pretty pretty good I think as far as keeping the space clean um, and wash all those blankets and towels that I was using but anyway guys have a great day I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next week for tarantula Tuesday and I will be coming out with a sling tank cleaning soon because I will be doing Blinky's tank next weekend all right take care bye bye